Hi, this is Jeff Riston with uh, Lions Wire and Detroit Lions Podcast. And since we are doing our show a day late this week, we're recording on Thursday night. It's Wednesday evening, uh, and we're going to be interviewing Jerry Jacobs tomorrow night. So I thought I'd uh, get take a couple of the uh, the more meteor topics uh, that, that have come up in the last couple of days, namely the cutdowns and the uh, Lions getting rid of Don Muehlbach, the, the longtime long snapper. Uh, they deserve a little bit more time to, than we can flush out while we're interviewing Jerry. So I thought I'd cover those tonight uh, in a bit of a little uh, quick hit uh, vlog here. Let's start with it. Don Muehlbach is gone. Death, taxes, and Don freaking Muehlbach, as many people have said. Uh, check your life insurance policies because uh, Muehlbach is no longer with the Lions. It's interesting seeing the reaction to this. Uh, it's somewhat expected. Muehlbach's been around since 2004. He's been a, a fixture. Um, as I tweeted out uh, right in the, the aftermath of when it happened, he's the only long snapper I know where you see people that have his jersey that aren't related to him, and they wear it proudly. Um, I, I saw uh, the last time I was at practice, which was uh, last the end the end of last week. There were two people in Don Muehlbach jerseys. They weren't related to Don Muehlbach. The fact that that team, most 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 teams the, the fans don't even know who the long snapper is. I guarantee you, if you went to Cleveland right now and you asked people uh, who their long snapper is, maybe maybe thirty three percent would would guess that it's Charlie Hewlett. Um, a lot of people would still probably say Ryan Pop Brown, who hasn't been there in a decade. It's just, it, it's not a position where you know who it is, um, but the fact that Muehlbach was, was so respected and seeing the outpouring of, of support from from the former teammates, uh, guys like Golden Tate uh, chiming in, you know, Quandre Diggs, Darius Slay, um, you know, Lawrence Jackson, all calling him just like the GOAT. Um, and you can see it in Dan Campbell's eyes when he was when he was addressing the media last night, telling everyone that, yes, they did, in fact, release Don Muehlbach and how hard it was. You know, that's a different side of Danny Campbell that we don't normally get to see. The, the somber, serious, you know, um, he was clearly moved by it. You know, this was a teammate of his in Detroit. This was something that, that meant a lot. And and it, it showed to me that they understood the gravitas of what they were doing. They did not enter this situation lightly. This is not something like, oh, we got to cut down Muehlbach. Um, no, it, it didn't go down like that. Is it performance-based? That, that's, that would be the justification for it. I won't, I won't claim to have uh, watched every snap that uh, Scott Daly and Don Muehlbach, uh, Scott Daly, the, the current long snapper, um, although uh, Campbell has indicated that he's going to have some competition for that role. Uh, we'll see about that. But I have watched enough to know that Scott Daly is absolutely an NFL quality long snapper. Uh, and I've said that. I've said that to Justin Rogers. I've said that to Ben Raven. I've annoyed Jeremy Reisman from Pride of Detroit with that take uh, several times in different camps. You watch him. The guy's really good at what he does. Is he better than Don Muehlbach? Maybe. No, Muehlbach, so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to get struck down by the, the blasphemous gods here. He didn't have a great year last year. Was he bad? No. Was he perfect? Also no. He's 40 years old. They cut him on his 40th birthday, which is honestly pretty crappy. But that's, 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 just, that's, that's life in the NFL, unfortunately. And Muehlbach knows that. And he knew that, you know, he knew, he understood that Scott Daly was real competition for him. Like, they've had other people that have come in in the past, uh, but it, it's never been a serious thing. Um, they have actually tried to, um, obviously, the drafting of Jimmy Landis several years ago, um, Yobach wound up having two of his three best seasons in the, the years right after that. He did fade a little bit. He did not have the best year. He wasn't having a perfect camp. Was he good enough to still play in the NFL? Yes. Yes, he is. I happen to think he, he, he will probably hang it up and retire. I don't think he wants to go through the rigmarole of moving his family around. That, that, that seems to be a big deal. But he, he will get inquisitions, that's for sure. Make, make note about, about that. But sentimentality towards a long snapper, I mean, people are talking about how this is, you know, the, this is the latest in the chapter of, of mistreating Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson. Folks, perspective, please, please. He was a very good long snapper. But, that, cool the Hall of Fame talk. In 17 seasons, he made two Pro Bowls. Now, some of that's the fact that he played in Detroit. Yeah, probably. He probably deserved three or four of them. But uh, there, there have been more celebrated and more decorated long snappers. Uh, Zach Diossi is a good example, who made five Pro Bowls and four first-time All-Pros. Who's ever going to get a sniff into, the, into the, the, the Hall of Fame? So just, just curb that talk. 
it's great that he was a wonderful, popular long snapper in Detroit. It's great that he had that awesome career here. But as Dan Campbell said, it was time. Father time does not wait. Um, we, we've, we've seen it with other people, and I, I commend the Lions for making the difficult decision now to get it out of the way, to, uh, to, to let Don know, first off, that, hey, you, you, know, you, you probably need to find some, some alternate plans, whether it be with another team or something, because we're, just, we're, we're going in a different direction, and we're getting rid of you before we have to get rid of you because of poor performance. And I think having seen so many players who lasted a year or two too long in a place, you didn't want to see that with Don Muehlbach. You wanted him to go out knowing that he could still play, knowing that he was still a good contributor, and, and not being forced out because he's not good anymore, because he has an errant snap or anything. Uh, as for what's going to happen with him, Scott Daly looks fine to me. Uh, I don't have an issue with, with, with the football side of it. Obviously, the sense of mentality, it hurts a little bit, man, but, you know, it, it's... We'll, we'll get past it. Um, look at it this way. This Lions team isn't winning the Super Bowl this year. Um, they're not going to rally around Don Muehlbach to, 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 to do that. He wouldn't be here in another year or two. He's 40 years old. There is an infinite, or a, a, there is a finite time limit for, for how long you can play in the NFL. I mean, and Tom Brady obviously defies that, but you know, long snap is a little bit different. You know, that, that's, that's an awkward position. That re, it's a very specific skill set. He was really, really good at it for a really long time, and I hope that people remember that. I also hope that people don't uh, demonize Scott Daly for taking his job because that's that's life in the NFL, guys. That's that's just the way it goes. Um, cheer on for number forty-seven. He looks he has looked really, really good in camp. Uh, I, I I can't stress that enough. That, that every time I've watched Scott Daly, I'm like that that guy can play. I, I it won't be in Detroit, but that can play. I, I've said that several times, and and now now he will be playing in Detroit. So. Uh, don't take it out on Scott Daly. Um, if you if you're angry with the Lions, if you're really angry with the ownership for uh, for, for like the long snapper on his 40th birthday, yeah, this is a little this is a little shady. It's a little cheesy, but it probably could have done better than that. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, I I wouldn't worry in the grand scheme of things that losing uh, losing. Losing Don Muehlbach isn't going to uh, inhibit this team all that much. It's much less significant than, than having Matt Prater walk away this past offseason uh, or, or some other guys who, who have left the building um, voluntarily and didn't really want to come back. Um, if that's not the case with Muehlbach, I, I, and, like, honestly, I don't think you will notice a difference. I really don't. Maybe, maybe, maybe we will. And, and when it happens, I'm sure that the onslaught will be, Oh, if Don Muehlbach was here, that wouldn't happen. Why the Lions say no Lions? Yeah, please don't be that way. Let, let, let it happen first before you be that way. Let's put it that way. All right. Go on to something a little more, uh, I don't know, uplifting. Roster cuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's an awkward transition for you. Uh, the Lions cut a few guys. Um, two of them absolutely had to be cut. One of them because he proved to be a turd. That would be Alex Brown, the quarterback who drove the wrong way drunk up Interstate 175. He's really a turd, not just for driving drunk, because he injured Charlie Tomopo, the tight end who had a real shot of at least sticking on the practice squad this year. He was in a good battle for the number three spot. He's been he's been waived with the non-football injury list. He injured, uh, it was either his, his ribs, his neck, or his back, some combination of all three in the accident. Um, it's good that he's going to be okay, but uh, you, you can't have that. So so Alex Brown, good riddance. Um, I... I he deserves to go to jail, quite honestly, for what he did. If all the charges that uh, that have been levied against him are legit, um, that guy needs to go away for a little while. So uh, that made a couple of the spots really easy. Uh, the only There wasn't any really surprising cuts um, in the cutdowns, um, and, and nobody's significant. No, nobody's going to get picked up somewhere else. Um, a couple of the players who stayed, though, um, are probably a little bit more of, of interest um, one of them who stayed is Jelani Tavai. Now, nobody, I don't think anybody expected him to be in the first round of cuts. Don't expect him to be in the second round of cuts next week either. Uh, because, uh, well, we got to talk about it. Sean Dion Hamilton is one of the cut. Well, well, he's on injured reserve. He wasn't necessarily cut. This guy was making the team. Number 50 was the best cover linebacker on the squad. And he's hurt. He's out. He will be out for the year. Once you're placed on injured reserve before the final 53-man cuts... You are indeed out for the season for the team that put you on it. You can take an injury settlement, get a waiver, and go somewhere else. 
and, and sign with them. Um, and that does happen occasionally, but it cannot be in Detroit. He cannot play for the Detroit Lions in 2021. That leaves a roster spot opening for Jelani Tavai to possibly sneak in. Now, he's still in competition for this. And let's break down the inside linebackers real quick on this. Uh, and this is something that Chris and I will probably talk about as well. But I, I, I want to I wanna go through it because I, I, I wrote a piece earlier this week uh, about j- how it's time for the Lions to let Jelani Tavai go um, and find try to find another place um, early enough where he, in, in the training camp season where in preseason where he can prove himself with that other team. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Um, Hamilton's injury sort of puts the kibosh on that. I would just say a couple things. He's played better than he has in the past, but we, we watched it against Buffalo. We're probably going to see it against Pittsburgh. It's still not good enough for what we need in the middle. He's behind Jamie Collins. He's behind Alex Anzal, and there's no question about that. He is certainly behind Derek Barnes. He was behind Sean John Hamilton. He's probably behind, and, and I say probably because I don't know. I'm not in their meeting rooms, but based on what I've seen um, f- through several practices, I've been at, at I think I've been at, at nine of the 15 practices and also uh, watched the preseason game. He's behind Anthony Pittman. He's behind Jalen Reeves-Maben. Uh, probably they're even on defense, but, but Jalen Reeves-Maben gets the nod on special teams. That's still a lot of guys in front of him. I don't know how many off-ball linebackers they're going to keep. If, if, if he sneaks in, it's pushing. Honestly, I think it's because it will be pushing off somebody at another position and not necessarily any of those guys above him, although Pittman probably shouldn't sleep too easy. Uh, if he makes it through the next round. Look, it, it, the people who responded with the just the vitriol towards Jelani Tavai, you are exactly why I want him to be cut, because he's a good human being, he's a good guy, he's a good teammate, he's given everything that he's got. His, his best just hasn't been good enough, and it still doesn't look like it's good enough. I think it, I think it, the, the situation in Detroit, I think the draft status weighs on him, I think the... the the weight gain that he had to go through, the, the body transformation and all the negativity, he needs a fresh start somewhere else. That was that was the that was the the, the meaning of what I wrote. That, that was what my, my intended message was. And it got bastardized a little bit that I hate the guy. Look, he's not a great football player. I, I will not candy coat that. But it's not like I hate this guy. I, I want him to succeed. I just don't see a path for him to succeed in Detroit. I think he needs to go somewhere else. I still think the Lions would be wise to do it. But I really, really do not expect it now. I expect him to play through the final preseason game, and I expect them to have a very difficult conversation about Jelani Tavai and what to do with him. Because he's proven he's not a turd. This is a, he's a hard worker. He's done every single thing the team has asked him to do. He is getting better. He had a wonderful practice on Tuesday night. He it was solid on Monday. I mean, there, there, there are glimpses of a of legit football player there, but... I, I still hope that it winds up being somewhere else, but I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna hold my breath that it happens, unfortunately. And, and I think honestly, I, I do think it would be for the best for him to go, but you know where we're at with that, who knows? Um, the other thing that happened, they brought in Jordan Tamu at quarterback, and this is ostensibly because Tim Boyle has an injured ankle. We all saw him hurt it against Buffalo. He looked legitimately hurt. He, uh, he was walking around in a very clunky ankle brace on Monday and Tuesday, although he did actually throw a few reps in the individual drills. Don't expect to see him against Pittsburgh. They needed somebody who could take reps because Jared Goff can't take them all. David Blau was dealing with a, a short, a, uh, easy for me to say, a, sh- a sore or tight shoulder. Um, so, so he's a little bit limited on that. They needed somebody who could come in and throw. Tom, who actually was with the team last year, um, if you've heard the name before, that that's probably where it was. Um, you might remember him from the XFL, where he was the best player in that entire league, regardless of position. He was really, really good for the, the Battle Hawks. Uh, he was the quarterback at Ole Miss when they had A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, uh, among others, uh, Dawson Knox, the, the tight end for the Bills that we just saw a couple nights ago. Um, there, there's something there. He's not. He doesn't have a great arm. Uh, he is mobile. He can throw on the run. Um, he, he, he's a... He's a practice squad worthy quarterback, and a lot of people took it in as like, "Oh my God, the, the dissatisfaction with Boyle or Boyle's too hurt." No, I, I don't. Th- he's not taking over for, for Jared Goff, folks. He is legit competition for David Blau, though. Um, and if Blau doesn't, you know, if if Blau proves that he's, you know, just can't, the shoulder isn't good enough to, to last through the entire preseason, you can see a move there. But this is not. This is not. This is not. This is not the Lions taking a quarterback. 
to replace Jared Goff or to replace Tim Boyle. I saw a lot of that on Twitter. I saw a lot of it on Reddit. I don't need to see that. It's wrong. Just let that let that go. Uh, just a couple other little little thoughts. We did see Levi on on Zurique back. He looked really really good uh, in Tuesday night's practice. Uh, he got a sack on the very first play of team drills. He was he was moving very well. He he explained the different his back injury as being the difference between playing through pain and being injured. I thought that was a very savvy explanation on his part. This Lions team is indeed being very very cautious with the injured players. Guys like DeAndre Swift, Anzarike, uh, Jamie Collins has been in that situation, although he's he's been back for the most of the time. But like Corn Elder. Um, uh, there's a couple other guys that, that, that fit that bill. Uh, Hawkinson, um, again, if they if they ha- if it was a regular season, they could play. I don't have any question about that. But they're, they're keeping them out because these games don't matter. Um, and once again, the games don't matter. They were not playing to win. They shouldn't play to win. If we didn't learn anything from Rod Marinelli emphasizing winning in the preseason and then going winless in the regular season, you're not a very good Detroit fan if you think that. Um, I, that's all I have to say. They're trying to develop players and learn how different players react in different situations. I don't care that they didn't manage the clock well. It doesn't matter. It's a scrimmage. It's an exhibition. It doesn't count. We got to see players. We got to see the defense in a two-minute drill. That's that's pretty valuable. We got to see David Blau and, and the receiving core operate in a in a red zone drill. That's pretty important. We actually got to see a kicker make a, a field goal. Hey, we we don't we got a kicking competition, folks. They got to figure these things out. So uh, bag that criticism, please. Uh, just 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 stop with a. You don't try to win preseason games. Period. I don't care about the results of a preseason game, and you shouldn't either. Unless you're gambling on it, and then you should probably seek professional help. But anyways, just going back to uh, to Anzarike. he's He looks really, really good. He's been very active in taking mental reps. He's been out there. He's been attentive. I think we're going to see him in against Pittsburgh. If not, we will certainly see him in the, in the preseason finale uh, when, when that comes up uh, at home. Look, there's reason to be excited about this defensive line. He's one of the reasons why. When he's on his game and healthy, he can fluctuate between that five technique and the three technique and even go out to a seven, and he can move. He can do gimmicks with people. He's, he's a better player than Jay Sean Cornell. He's probably a better player than Deshaun Hand at this point. And both of those guys, by the way, are, are viable NFL players. Uh, I don't know if they're viable NFL starters, but they both belong in NFL rosters. So uh, the the poo pooing of, of the, the draft pick, and I, and I know that you know when, when I, I I'm guilty of this when I posted on the Lions where I'm like, hey, you know, this is a back injury that goes back to Washington. Not necessarily a good look uh, for the Lions if he can't play, but it, it seems like everything is just fine. They're going to take him healthy. Um, they they do have a new training staff in place, uh, so hopefully hopefully the new training staff uh, works well with with Anzarike and we keep him on the field for 17 games. Last thing, quick thing. DeAndre Swift still sidelined with the groin. This is one to worry about, folks. He pra- he went through a walkthrough uh, on Monday. He he participated with trainers in the side. They they, they tried to push him pretty good. At, as as Danny Campbell said, you know we we tried to redline him a little bit. That that's his parlance. Um, and then they wanted to see where he was at. He couldn't even get his pads on on Tuesday. He was in street clothes watching everything. Folks, that's not a good sign. Look, groin injuries, soft tissue injuries. We saw how it impacted uh, Jeff Okuda a year ago. You got to be really careful with this. There's a lot at stake w- with with DeAndre Swift this year. Thank goodness they signed Jamal. <laughs> Thank goodness they signed Jamal Williams to get in there and, and share their load. And it looks like they might have found something with, with Jamar Jefferson and and by the way, um, <laughs> some of the other guys, Craig Reynolds, and what he did Friday night. You know, there's there's hope there. But uh, if you're looking for a guy to be your feature back, Swift would be that guy. Uh, and already he's having durability issues. Um, we just watched the Eagles put carry on Johnson, um, put him on ice again because unfortunately he can't stay healthy either. Hopefully it's not this, you know, the Lions second round running back curse with going back to McKellar Shore and all that. I don't believe in that kind of stuff, but it, it is a little interesting that it keeps happening. Um, Swift ha- didn't have a great injury history coming in, but but it was something that concerned. Uh, he missed some time last year um, in in the COVID camp, but uh, you know, look, hopefully he's ready for the season. But if you're one of those people that's expecting to rush for 1,250 yards and catch 75 passes, probably want to scale back those expectations. So 
pray for his health, pray for his groin. That, that, that's a really weird thing to say. But you probably want to do that if you're a Lions fan because uh, he is the difference between the offense being really dynamic with both the run and the pass and, and just sort of being, I don't know, better than last year but, but not as good as it could be. Uh, they need him on the field. They're not going to play him in the preseason. I don't expect to see him before the regular season, and it is something to keep an eye on. If he's not participating in practices, you need to know that. You need to be aware of that because that's not good. But all we got, again, stay tuned. We're going to be interviewing Jerry Jacobs, the undrafted uh, cornerback, who's got a real shot at, at at least sticking on the practice squad, if not making the, the outright team. Uh, we'll have him on Thursday night live on the YouTube channel. Please check out our Detroit Lions podcast, and thanks again for all the support at LionsWire. Thank you.